I have a review or actually just a flip through for you of the Saxon Algebra 1 curriculum. This can be used, of course, for any child that is taking Algebra 1. Most people use Algebra 1 for ninth or 8th, ninth, or 10th grade. Um, we actually completed Algebra 1 in 8th grade and we'll be moving on to Geometry in the ninth grade. But I have a Saxon Algebra 1 to show you. Now, we ended up not using this this year because we used our online school, which provided her excellent help for learning algebra. She has an algebra teacher that has done an excellent job. But this is what I use for my oldest daughter, who is now away in college. And I used this about five years ago. So I will show you the Algebra 1 textbook that is Saxon Math. Okay, so this is the textbook. Um, looks like that. And when you open it, it looks like any other math book with your table of contents and so forth. However, it is different than a typical math program. What you'll find in a Saxon approach is what's called the spiral approach. So you'll start with concepts. Actually, you'll start with the review section. So um, they usually have a review, but I think that might be in the earlier versions like 8.7 and 7.654 math of Saxon. But when you hit Algebra 1 and Geometry, they just really just um, start the lesson right away. So they jump right into the lesson. You turn the page and you are jumping straight into the lesson. So they're telling their student what to do. So your student has to read, try to understand what they're doing, go step by step and read it for themselves. Okay, so that's the thing. It's a self-taught program. They're reading. And let me show you something else about this program. It usually, so it has two sections. This one has 1.A. They're going to read this. This is about the topic addition and subtraction of fractions. And uh, if you go to the next page, section B of the same lesson, okay, is talking now about lines and segments. Lines and segments. So you've got like two different topics in one lesson, but your child, once again, is to read through step by step and just try to follow the program and understand what is happening. Then you will see the page of um, problems. So this is your problem set and your students are asked to do all of them. But, you know, as homeschool parents, we always do things our own way. So I would have my student do every other problem. Okay, so every other question. So number one, three, five, seven, nine, or something like that. And then it comes with what's called a homeschool packet. Looks like this, very little thin book. And the homeschool packet gives you the test solutions and the problem set answers. So if your student has this, they can check their answers and compare to see if they've got their answers right. Now, it's not gonna really show them how they got it wrong. It will just show them the right way or the right answer. You also have test forms. Mine are kind of beat up right now, but you can order the test forms to go with it as well. And this is just tests, all the tests that are part of this. So if you want your child to have the official Saxon test, you need to get the test forms as well. Now, I have one more thing to show you with Saxon. It might be worth the money to grab the Dive DVD. And I'm not sure if this is streaming yet or if it's something you can just have get a digital download or go online. But at this point, when I ordered this five years ago, it was a DVD and it costs a lot of money. But the beauty in the DVD, and they're called Dive, by the way, Dive. DVDs and they go along with the Saxon. It shows step by step every problem pretty much in the book. And it shows um, this instructor, David Shorman, he's teaching three to five practice problems and every single lesson in the book, step by step. So if your student is stuck and doesn't understand by just simply reading the text to try to figure out something in the lesson and just by reading it, they're not getting it. They can get the DVD and have this guy explain it to them. And again, it's every single lesson in the book. Okay, so there's that. 
Now, I wanted to um, show you how that works because Saxon, again, like I said, is spiral. You'll see different topics introduced for each chapter. So one chapter may have two or three different topics. And then you'll find that the very next chapter is talking about something completely different than what you would have expected. It's not that streamlined uh, path from A to B. You're kind of going around and looping in circles almost. So everything builds on each other, but it feels like you're jumping around a little bit if you're accustomed to something, for example, like this. So this is another algebra program that's not Saxon. This is Pearson. And there's a big difference between Pearson and Saxon. Now, Pearson is what a lot of public schools use and the private schools also. We were actually planning to attend a different school this year, which uses this curriculum. So that's why we purchased the Pearson book, just in case. But we ended up not doing that particular school. So what you'll find is that they seem to be a little bit more streamlined Whereas you know that you're only talking about systems of equations and inequalities for unit six, and you're only talking about linear functions for unit five, right? So there's that peace of mind that you're going to talk about one topic in, in a cluster, you know, of all the topics surrounding that one topic and master it, hopefully, then move on to the next topic and build upon the prior, you know, units information to learn the new content. So that's how your typical math programs are laid out, but I just needed to let you know that Saxon is not like that. So um, if your student needs thorough review for mastery, this is excellent because it's like, it's not incremental. It's, it's almost like, um, how do I say, besides saying spiral, it just keeps looping and looping and looping, meaning you learn something one day, then you learn something else day two, then you learn another topic day three, you learn a different topic on day four, and then maybe you kind of touch on that same topic that you were introduced to in day one on day 50, okay? So you have all that space of time, but meanwhile, you're learning new things every single day, and what happens is the, the review part, so I'll show you um, what I showed you earlier, the practice problem, or the problem set, so you have your practice problems and you have a problem set. Now in your problem set, it's going to have review of all of the content you've been learning for the previous lessons. So that's why it's important to go in order with Saxon. You can't be hopping around from one topic to the next. You can't like with, with, for example, with Pearson, I could probably skip over some things and maybe, I mean, I'm not saying that's the thing you should do. But it might be possible to just focus on one topic that you really need help with. Uh, let's say it was the inequalities and focus on inequalities in this type of curriculum. But with Saxon, you're going to get it all because what happens is that if you follow the plan in order, then you are going to find that after you learn that lesson, and all the lessons are relatively short. So when you learn that lesson for the day, you'll get a practice set. I didn't show you the practice set. That's different than the problem set. So the practice, this practice set, you, you will see it only has two, two questions. That's it. Two questions. And that's your practice, okay, for that lesson. But now the problem set has like 30 questions. Now the problem set is what's going to cover all the material that you learned, not only in this week's lesson, which was very short, but in all the other previous week's lessons. So that cumulative review, that spiral review, where you're constantly practicing all that you've learned since lesson one. So that's what's different about Saxon. Okay, now that's overwhelming for some people. And I found that it's not my favorite curriculum, but it does work well for some students. So that's why I wanted to show you Saxon Algebra one, a little a little bitty flip through so you can be making a decision for your middle and high school students or younger who are taking this course. And hopefully I've sort of given you an idea of what it feels like to take a Saxon class. Now, there's lots of options out there, we all know, and uh, there's reasons why I'm not using Saxon right now, but I just have to show you guys what it is in case you're wondering and in case you're doing research 
for your up, your upcoming homeschool year that you'll have an additional voice out here, someone who's used it for both our kids. Um, and I have used 7.6 and 8.7 and 5.4, Saxon 3. Uh, I think Saxon 3 was where I started. I didn't even use Saxon kindergarten or first or second second grade. I use Saxon 3 with my oldest daughter. And we switched back and forth with my youngest daughter because we ended up using Singapore for a while in Math Mammoth. I then ended up back with Saxon and now we're out of Saxon, I think. But we'll see. Um, for geometry, I'm not sure which path we're going to take, but I hope this has been helpful to you in your decision making. So thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed this content, please hit the bell, subscribe to this channel. I, I'm here for you guys and love to help you with your homeschool endeavors. And I hope to see you on the next video. Bye.